hear me? You in charge. I want to hear you say that. Say it. I'm in charge. You're my partner. I know. Say I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Eyes crossed in my head again. You picked me up then dropped me in the ocean. You're alone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Taryn Manning to the stage. Your mic's right there. I know, we are far away. <laughs> that was really sweet, thank you. You should put my music in. Yeah. Uh, thank Taryn's you. a singer, I don't know if everyone's aware of that. A musician. Where do you want to start? We could start at the beginning if we want. Start do you guys know that you. Taryn's kind of from North County? San Diego, Oak Crest. Yeah, yeah you, you kind of grew up. up Rico's and, Taco Shop, Encinitas yeah. Boulevard. You know, <laughs> come on. I mean, you were you were hanging here when you were like 12 for yeah. a while. You know yeah. what I mean? You came from from uh, Tucson. From uh, where was that? Arizona. Virginia. Or? Well, I was born in Virginia, and then Arizona. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and we what moved to the beach. And what did you think about San Diego? What were those years like as a teenager? Because you had some ups and downs oh, no, through that, that was whole a good time. stuff. Oh, well, that's when my life really began in, when I was 13. And I moved to Cardiff by the Sea. Yeah. And I lived in the roundhouses. Did you guys ever see those on Glasgow? They're like two boobs. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I, I always played soccer. So I joined soccer and I started making friends. And that was awesome. Right, and that's kind of when your mom put my, you in acting classes. Like, yeah. no matter if you didn't have any money or anything, yeah. that woman put you in acting and singing classes and she all sure, that. She sure did, yeah, she did. Um, was that you? And she had no her? choice, basically. I'm like, I want to do that. That, yeah. We were, we were very, uh, you know, there was a lot of poverty growing up, but I, I wouldn't know the difference. You know, it's like I wouldn't have it any other way, because my mom always figured it out somehow to. to Make, she always said I had champagne taste on a beer budget. Yeah, mommy rules. Yeah. And she, um, yeah, she sacrificed a lot for me. But I think I also got in her hair and annoyed her. She's like, just do anything, Taryn. I had a lot of energy. So she had to, you know, sort of funnel it somehow. But I was always doing something, karate, baton, soccer, anything. Hanging with the friends, roller skating at skate country. So you All weren't, that. you you didn't mind people staring at you or being the popular girl or any of that jazz. I wasn't like, popular at all. You weren't popular. Was that the goal? Like, what was it that you thought to yourself, hey, I want to be an actress? Uh, that was the furthest thing from my mind. I was a dancer. I did ballet. Yeah. That, that kept me out of trouble, uh, dance class, even though I smoked cigarettes, uh, GPCs, a generic pack of cigarettes, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Behind the behind the dance studio, um, <laughs> she didn't know. Um, but listen, I, I, I quit smoking. But yeah, I, I, it, had I not had dance every day and been accepted into the dance program at Lewis McKay, it was right there on a by Poinsettia, yeah, what, yeah, right. El Camino Real. Yeah. Um, that would have uh, that would have been because my you know my father. When I was 13, almost 14, my dad committed suicide. And um, not that I want to bring it down, but to, right there was like a fork in the road for me. And it was like, I feel like I could have went all the way down or, you know, but I was like, nah, you know, let's do this thing. And so I feel like my whole life um, to deal with depression rather than like go the bad way, I just kept moving, you know what I mean? Just kept moving through it. And sort of that was the perseverance. And it seemed like you could take some of those emotions that you ran through the gamut within yourself, it seems, and you could put them towards your acting. Is that something? Because 
I mean, Lord have mercy, she can do roles, right? It's just, Thank you so much. I mean, I mean, seriously, like it, what's fascinating is, you know, um, Taryn's here, she's a North County girl, but we did the movie uh, Crazy Beautiful together, right? And, Which brings uh, me back to the acting class, because, you know, Kirsten and I... Yes. So my mom would drive me up to this acting class every Wednesday night from San Diego to Burbank, and it was like, before anybody was anybody, it was like Erica Christensen, Lily Sobieski, Evan Rachel Wood, Kirsten Dunst, and I'm not name-dropping. They would never let me even act with them. <laughs> I'd be like, but why? Why can't I act with them? And, and so that, that was the fire that burned in me. I was like, that was my whole thing. Like, I want to act with Mercedes McNabb. Um, I want to act with, with Evan. I was never allowed. He said, you're not good enough yet, Taryn. I'm like, oh, man. And I would just, you know, it would just stew inside of me. And, and I would study so hard um, from 13 to about 19. Just every week I would take that class. Yeah, and that was your film debut, right? I mean, yeah. that, that was it. And, uh, you know, Kirsten... Oh yeah, and then, and then we, they do, yeah they did a a, a reading like yes. a partner reading yeah, and they had these gals you know there was a gal with all this nice curly hair <laughs> yeah. and another beautiful there was five of us I'm like I'm blonde and we look just alike like this is this they're not gonna choose me and and John Stockwell was like you know how best friends start to look alike when they're close. Yes. Yes. And, and then we had a great time because we were in acting class together, though she never read with me. We did a great job in that, yeah. <laughs> in the chemistry <laughs> read. <laughs> I mean, did you, when you were working, because it was amazing watching Kirsten on the red carpet or whatever, yeah, and she cool. was, and John was talking about all this stuff, and she was just saying, oh, no, like, you were just extraordinary. I mean, what did you take away from that movie? I took away Never Give Kirsten Alcohol. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, yeah, you know, um, the one fine night, it's funny, you guys, because yes, one fine it, night, it someone was. brought alcohol to the set. I was like 20, and she was like 19 or yeah, so. Yeah, she was really It young. was a taco truck night, and she overdid it, and yeah. um, <laughs> it was cute, but um, anyway, yeah, no, she's an amazing actress, and that was different for her because she never played an edgy character, and, and I was so pleased to play her friend, and, and uh, we had such a good chemistry, and Jay Hernandez, and us, yeah. and, you know, yeah. she's awesome, and Jeff, and, you know, yeah. these sets, they, they're they so young. and So young. So like, here pure. You are. Yeah, and then what was crazy, riding on the coattail of that was some crazy movie called Crossroads, right? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. I think that was the order. <laughs> that's, that, you know what's always uh, amazing? Do you want to play a, cri a clip? Brittany. Watch, we, we got to see a you clip. Like I skipped the first one. Why not? She rules. Are you, are you ready, Sterling? Am I just throwing you a curveball? She didn't spin yet. She wasn't spinning and spinning and spinning. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what? What happened on the, That's sweet. do people remember you from that? Because it's, it's weird when I mention you, there's always a few roles, but do you remember the side of the road? Like, mm -hmm. what were you, th what did you discuss? How did the, how did the oh, scenes gosh. work? Do you, do you, because I've done movies with you and you kind of just chill out and then you just go on set. You don't really, do you prep when yeah. you're doing a scene? I meant, um, do you get in character? How does that yeah. work? Um, so that particular, so what happened, if I had one regret in my career, I'm going to, this is real. Um, it's funny because I grew up in a, in a mobile home park, like, a, you know, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But what I did at a very uh, baby, you know, like an embryonic phase of my career is I, I told the press in my very first interview, all proud, you know, I grew up in a trailer park, Section 8 housing. My father committed suicide and basically... Basically, I was marginalized at that point. Like, she, she'll always play trailer trash, never get paid properly, and even fight for money, like, never paid for Hustle and Flow, um, never paid for a lot of the movies I'm most known for because I'm, it, it's good that I make money, you know? It, she, you know, so basically, like, not that we shouldn't be honest, but it's, it's a lesson that I learned that less is more and, and hold your heart's your cards close and not everybody needs to know what you've been through they're not impressed by it um so basically in this particular film I was miserable because I had like you know the, the baby bump and I'm like well why can't I be pretty like them but I was still young and still just like 
processing everything and and you know Britney Spears you guys like that was like the height of her career and the fans would be it was neat to be honest was, I'll never forget it you know like on the the borders of our set would be all the fans you know they'd have to shush them and I'd be like wave to everybody but she was so used to just you know being you know but I'd be like hey you know like waving for her and um, they're like we don't care about you get her to look <laughs> <laughs> but um but she was a real dear heart and um and she really was and, and we talked about some naughty stuff you know everybody thought at the time she was a virgin but y'all you won't believe what i did this weekend um and we'd be like what <laughs> and it's yeah and um uh, do you do you like, talk to what? her do you talk to her now i don't think i don't know who talks to her at this point but um so do you, do you understand what she went through? Because, you yeah. know, the public is pretty hardcore, right? Yeah, like, they are. Like, when hard, you yeah, were I'm, watching her go through that. No, that was, that was not what she was going through then. No, this was a, a beautiful young gal that was still completely pumped on life and, like, you know, happy. And, you, you know, at the height of her career, like, not the pressure, though, yeah. you know, but she was happy on that movie. She was happy. Yeah, she yeah, was, right? For sure. And that kind of launched... That kind of launched you, right? Because is it that one? I don't know. I mean, that was it's, that was a pretty. Am I launched yet? No, I'm still fucking struggling. Well, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I didn't mean it like that. But you know, it was kind of a everywhere. You know, because Britney Spears was in a movie. Yeah, it's cool. Were, you know, working you with a rock star or pop star. Yeah. Yeah. But then Eminem, I got to work with. Now that was like Yay! yes. Yeah. I mean, I was. And just Brittany gonna... Murphy, who was my pal, who we lost right? along the way. Yeah, that sucked. That was real right there. Because how was Eight Mile for you? That was really cool, like that, you know, he's a, he's funny, and he's, he loved being in the movie, he studied so hard, and he was so impressed by the actors, and we're all impressed by him, and um, he was writing the whole time, and writing all the music and everything, and so it was really neat. He was really smart, and really funny. Right, yeah. And also, like, you know, before, he loved his daughter, too, he'd always talk about his daughter. Yeah. And like, and then when dude. you, when you started Hustle and Flow, you... So that and would Lola. be like 2000. Is that when you had, I mean, did you, what did you really did? So now I've that become That was amazing, damaged. that that character. I mean, that, I well, thought Then I was, had my record deal, and I was signed with DreamWorks, and I had this song on 8 Mile Soundtrack, and then DreamWorks took crap. Music's my number one, you guys, like that. I'm like a struggling musician and a working actor. <laughs> yeah, both, both. It never gets easier. Right, I mean that was yeah. your song. That was I'm on grateful. The, huh? That was yeah. your that was your song. Like, do you still write all your music? Yeah, I love music. Music's my life. You know, like it's truly, it, it really truly is. My father was a musician, and um, my brother is a musician. I grew up all around music. I didn't grow up around acting, and sometimes I feel like the reasons why I got um, parts is because there was a time that we got to go in the room and audition. Um, we got to go and meet the casting director and the producers, if we made the producer call and everything, and like you could look people in the eye and and um, all I wanted to do was get back to the studio. So I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? You know what I mean? So it was just sort of like, cause I always say back then when people would ask for advice, I'd be like, just have something else that you love to do. Cause that desperation, they can feel it. Um, and so, you know, you can feel when someone's desperately wants something. I always say it's like sand that you hold in your hand. Like, if you want it too much and you squeeze it, it's going to come out the other side. If you hold it too loose, it's going to seep through your fingers. But if you just, you know what I mean, then it just holds. And so when I walked in, I'd be like, yeah, I do my part, do it well. And then I'd leave, and i never think about it again. And I really think there's something about letting go, truly letting go and being like, I'm worthy. I have something else that I do, and I'm good at it. And that really is what carried me through this whole shenanigans. Because, I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Because it's not easy, you guys. Because what's, yeah. what's interesting about you is the, the bravery and the parts you play, like Orange is the no New one Black, likes me. right? Yeah. No one likes me. I play like, Karen. I play Karen and Karen, I know. No one likes me. Like, people really think I'm this asshole, racist piece of crap. But it's like, you know, like, i got to pay the bills. One, two... It, it's like why can't people understand your acting? Do you ever do you ever It's have fun to play time? the villain. What? 
It's fun to play the villain sometimes. It is, yeah. I mean, it is. you know, not to say that that's anything like me, but it's like, you know, the whole, you know, even with Karen, because it's been so rough, you guys have been just, and it's depressed me, you know, I've been down about it. It's like, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry I played this role. What have I done? But that's how good you are. <laughs> right? But it just hurts. It hurts like my it, heart. I mean, because you're not a Karen at all, but if you could come across that hardcore as a Karen at the world, like... But what, I don't get other roles because What did it. the public do to you? Do you get hate mail or yeah. like what happened? Oh, I get like, like you know, like, oh, I get like assassination, there's... like, oh, we're coming for you. Um, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I put up like 90 ficus trees and I'm going to build a fort around my house. I'm going to stay up all night and not sleep till the sun comes up. And be, yeah, I mean, I was scared, you know. I was scared because I can't really afford security. I'm not quite there yet. But, um, but so when, I had to. When did that start? Because you shot the movie and everything was cool and no one said anything. It wasn't controversial, really. Then the movie came out and then you, were you just no, inundated it, or it, how did that what's work? What's strange about it, and, and this is where I talk about discernment, like about listening to your gut, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. listen, people can win awards for for you know, playing Nazis and Schindler's List, but I play Karen, play Karen and Karen. It's like, could, did you have to name her, you know? Um, but then I'm just like completely, you know, it's right at the height of, um, you know, everything going on, which we all know. But the thing is, 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 is what, I, what I say is, um, sometimes it has to be at the top and boiling, right? That's when you have to show people. And the reason why I played that is because we need to understand that there are people like this, that one call, yeah. one, you know, one person playing cop or playing can, can really change um, the trajectory of someone's life. And I did it. I did it to show how, you know, ugly this type of snitchy, yeah. tattletale behavior is because I, I can't stand snitches. I can't stand tattletales like I always say like someone's gonna find out you don't have to tell on them trust me yeah. other people have seen it you know so but yeah it goes unseen because again I've always played these down and out characters very layered but very pigeonholed into this sort of white trash if you will and um, killing myself all the time um, dying of drug overdoses and it's like I don't I want to live I want to live turns out Wow. There were times I didn't want to live, but nowadays, at my age, I'm like, no, I want to live. And you mean, know, that's when, how my dad went out. When when people are when people come up, do people come up to you? And is there a character that they really that people identify with you most? Is it Orange Is the New Black? Is um, that no, I did a movie called Cleveland Abduction that I'm really proud of. It was on Lifetime about those gals that were um, chained up for all those years in yep, Ohio. Yep, and yep. I'm really proud of that piece right there. That was rough, but I had a great time. And, you know, great time in, in the sense of felt very fulfilled as an actor. I'm super proud of um, many of my films that people haven't seen, you know. Yeah. But some of the, yeah, Orange so, is fun. Absolutely. I love the arc that they gave me. Yes. That was cool, for sure. And we, do you receive a script? How does it work for you? How do you choose a role? I mean, I don't have it like that. It's not like, all right. Let me think here. Which one do Let me I play want? all the racists. That's yeah. what people think that I cherry pick. I'm like, that one, that one. They're like, why do you always choose those? You're too good at that. It's like, listen, lady, are, are you I got bills to pay. You know, are, truly. Are you saying you're typecast? Is that what you're saying? I think I'm a little typecast. Um, but listen, I tried to go against that, go against that like Jodie Foster did. My dream role is to play like Silence of the Lambs. Like when I saw that movie, like that was, I'm like, I want to be her. Like that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And the thing is, is I do martial arts and I, you know, I, I do all my own stunts. Like I can't stand if I see a stand in hands and they're not my hands. I'm like, no, because I, you know, I stunt drive. I drove since I was 13. My dad, the last thing we did together is he taught me how to drive, stick shift, change a tire, all that. I'm super tomboy. Um, not gay, but super tomboy. I was gay for a minute, but not anymore. I like to meet a man. Um, that was just a phase, I guess. Not that I have anything against him. Um, but yeah, you know, we go through phases. Um, that was really mad at men at that time. It's a whole other horse of another color. But yeah, so basically I can do it all. 
Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do any. I mean, dance I mean, monkey from dance. Record label, the you know, clothing designer. To, we, I'm should, we should open up some questions. Yeah. Don't you think so? Let's Where's, talk about you. Is there miracle? A, is there a microphone around here? You're the Andrew? miracle, not me. What the heck? I look mean, at this. We've, we've got more questions, but look at this. Look at I think hair. people want to ask you something, Taryn. Right? Yay! Woo woo woo! <laughs> right? Just ask it. Because you know what's it. trippy about you is you. I mean, your roles are very concentrated. Yeah. It takes a lot I of I like to depth. cry. I like to get it out, you know? It's hard, though, you guys. Like, I, I, I had started being like, oh, man, I'm happy these days. I can't, I can't do, like, I can't torture myself this way anymore. Like, because it was rough trying to get all that out, you know? Yeah. It really was. It, but I can do it. I can do it, you know? But it has to be something worth it. But I say no all the time. I'm like, I don't want to die. I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to have another needle in my arm. I've never been a drug addict. And I'm just like, it doesn't, it, you know, what do they say? Art imitates life. Yes. And it's like the frequency, right? What frequency we put out. It's like, how does the universe know if it's Taryn or if it's the role? So it's like when I put all my heart into it, it's like I want to live a good life. You know, things are so weird right now in life that I'm just like, you know, I want to I want to yeah. be happy. You know, it's so hard anyway, right? Yeah, dude, it's so hard. It's so hard, right? Okay, sure. where was it? Angela, you got the mic? Put your hands in the sky. Here we go. Look at the pug. Oh, my Taryn, look at the dog right there. Oh, that's, look at that. That's Paco. <laughs> What's his name? Um, when you play roles, do you ever get af afraid that it's going to take you a while to get out of that character? Or you get too deep in that character and it <laughs> starts to play with your psyche? Because, um, I mean, you, you, like you said, you've, you've been typecast a little bit into these, you know, bad girl roles and... and uh, just was wondering how that how affects your psyche overall. How long did it take you to get out of the role and, and forget about it? That's a great question. Thank you so much for that. Um, it's funny that you asked that. It's like, you know, when you were younger oh, yeah. and you'd go through a breakup, you could kind of bounce back and be like, yeah, so what? You know, water off a duck's back. But nowadays, um, every time I have to go to that dark place, it does take a little longer to get out of it. So um, it's, I'm not super method. That was one way... Um, the acting class, like, basically, uh, the, the teachings were keep it simple, keep it clear, most of all, be sincere. And one of the main teachings was, um, was um, if you have to go to those dark recesses of your mind, great, if, as long as, you know, you attach that to the role. But if on cut, you can't get out of it, don't use it. So I've always been, okay, if I'm going to go there about something that hurts, right, that bad, as I merge it with the writing, um, I've always made sure that on cut I can I can and I can get out, but there's been a few times as of late where it's harder to shake it. To be honest with you, as I get older, and my brain just it's a little more atrophy, you know, like, hey, easy. Yeah, you have to be careful. You know, you have to honor your life and honor your brain. Their minds are easily lost. That's why people say, wow, she lost her mind. Um, they're very like malleable and squishy, you know. So you have to be careful with people's minds and and um, be careful with the roles you play. Too. Yeah. Hope um, that answered your question. <laughs> nice. no. Um, what are some of the likes and the dislikes about uh, about your character of Mimi in in, uh, in Crossroads? Mm -hmm. well, what did you say, honey? Uh, what was that? Your your the the likes and the, and the dislikes of uh, oh the likes and the dislikes of Mimi. Yeah. Well, she you know I don't judge my characters. To be honest with you, that's something that I learned along the way is not to judge my characters. But, you know, if I could change her and have my way with her, um, you know, I'd tell her not to react so poorly and, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe change up her makeup a tiny bit. Maybe not a hanky and some pigtails. But, no, I think she had a lot of heart. And, um, you know, she was just a kind of a goofball. But she was going through a lot, you know, pregnant at a young age. But I thought she was fun. But I would tell her to, you know, relax. and You know what I mean? Yeah, good question, Catherine. Thank you so much. Hi, Taryn. Uh, I have two quick questions. Okay. Number one, do you have a dream role? Second, who is that actor that you really, really, really want to work with or collab with? Those are great questions. Um, I do have a couple of dream roles. I don't know about dream roles because I feel like they'll come, but I have a couple of things that I've that I've uh, been working on that are dreamy to me. Um, 
And they're basically just, you know, they're strong women and, and they're layered and they're not perfect, but, but they're not, um, they're not the bad seed or the one that, you know, they're not the, the negative of the, of the film. They're positive with their own, you know, issues as we all have, but, um, but, but, you know, we look up to them because of whatever they do, even if they pass away at the end, because always heroes, heroes don't always live, right? Um, also, um, an actor that I truly love and that I admire is, I really truly love Leonardo DiCaprio. I think that that is one of the most unlazy actors and just, just wow, like every role and in, in, uh, he's been cheated of awards, but what are awards really? But just what an awesome actor, you know, all the time and all the different variety of roles he plays. I think that was your question, right? That, yeah. And I also think Charlize Theron's really pretty rad too, like with Monster and just so beautiful and able to, you know, and there's several more, but I digress. Hello. Can I see a handbag? Hello, hello. Right here, Tara. There he is. How are you? I'm well, thank you so uh, much. Thank you for coming to the Brooks Theater. And as you know, the Brooks Theater, we have live theater here. Have you ever thought about <laughs> Can doing we do a monologue? live theater on, on a stage? Oh, goodness, that's one of my dreams. I love, you know, I grew up doing musicals and dance. Like, that would be a real dream of mine. Well, come Absolutely. on back, please. <laughs> All right, I'm in. All right. 100%. Yeah, you, you pick him out. I see a hand. Yeah, I hit it. All right. Wowzers. Um, so my friend at a very young age, Clifton Collins Jr. I don't know if you guys are aware of who that is. 187, The Castle, Capote. One of my very dear friends said this thing to me that I did not get at the time. I was like, okay, whatever that means. Um, he said, you see the same people going up as you do coming down. Right? But then as time went on, I'm like, yeah, that PA is now freaking, you know, so-and-so making movies, like, true. Like, just to always be kind and, and, and grateful. Like, interns, the whole shenanigans. Like, everybody moves to Hollywood. And the real, the real ones that want it bad, I started off as an extra, truly. Two years I did extra work to get my three SAG vouchers. Um, because I, I had a goal. So it's like you meet people as interns, like they have a goal, like those are the ones that get it. They understand the process. So see the same people going up as you do coming down. And it's the truth. That's the truth, that's cool though, it's neat. It's like, look at you, buddy. Where are we going? What'd you say? Yeah, right there. Robbie, give her the, yeah. So a couple of uh, questions that I wanted to ask were already asked, but I really want to know, do you have a favorite role that you played out of all of the films that you've been in? I feel like I haven't been exercised to the point yet where I really want to go. I feel like there's something brewing inside of me that, you know, and it's not like, oh, right. It's just that it's, just that it's time, you know, 44 years old, you guys. I don't know, time passes. It's like, it's real. You get older and older, and you're just like it's time. Like you know, I love I love children. I love the youth. I love I love um, you know trying to be a good role model coming from where I came from. Um, I love to sing and dance and act, but like at the same time, like I just wanna I just I wanna instill hope in 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 faith because I always say that I'm there is a chance you can make it. Like anybody can. It's true. Yep. Um, it's truly real and. Um, and with perseverance and, and, and time and, and eye on the prize and honing your craft, like, you too can do it. You know what I mean? You too beside and all this aside and be a true thespian, it's real. And with that being said, um, I love, you know, I really did enjoy um, Hustle and Flow. I thought that was fun because it was the first time I got to have, like, an arc. And I'm like, look at me. <laughs> Mom, I got more than a couple lines. Um, and then there, you know, and then and then from there, it was, you know, and then I've had I've had some really great roles that a lot of, a lot of times people haven't seen. But I've had such a nice career. I've been a working actor, and I'm very very grateful. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. that's good. Anyone else? 
Hi, Taryn. Oh, wow, that's really loud. Okay, um, so first of all, my son is fourth generation SDA, go Mustang. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. um, but you have been in several films with, I mean, pretty much iconic musicians. Mm -hmm. You yourself having a first love for music. So what were your takeaways when you were meeting with these different musicians and working with them? Are you picking their brain, talking to them about music? Or writing your pro you know the writing process anything like that um, no that was actually the furthest thing that I did during that time was you know I just I, I stood I stood as as an actor you know and I, a musician in my heart but not trying to push my music or you know but each time I got music in the in the films but I truly believe this hand of God that <laughs> and it's kind of dark but why not um, my, my album, Boom Cap, with my brother, you know, Eminem wanted to sign us really bad. And uh, my brother was kind of a dick, to be honest with you. And he said, we don't need to be put on. We're the golden child. So I'm like, Kellen, but please, you know? And, and that was having like an egotistical brother because all the labels wanted us, but Eminem wanted us too. But I love him because um, he, he put his ego down and he still put our, sound, our song on the soundtrack. With that being said, I remember when Larry Rudolph heard my album, um, and that was during Crossroads, and um, that was before, but I remember, like, he acted like he wanted to help, but then I remember suddenly, like, everything changed after that, and I'm not blaming, but I'm just saying, like, you know, there's certain people that can, like, thwart your career and, like, stifle it, and I'm not blaming, but I'm just saying, like, People do cock block along the way, and, and, and sh you know shit happens because we were we were we were meant to be you know it was on like we were most added and tons of music, uh, money behind us and stuff and like but I but I always say like I wouldn't be the person I am today without that without that pain like when they when, when DreamWorks went under and the rug was pulled out from under us we were in Japan and like my brother's never really recovered from that ever he's never been able to get over that and I've pushed forward but like. To be a hurting musician like that when, you know, shit was on, you know, and, and it just stops. But, but I think that you're right. It, that does bleed into my, to my acting and stuff. And Are you going to do some more music? Because your, your music, music was in day. a lot of soundtracks and all kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I put right? out music all the time. I love dance music, I DJ and stuff. But, like, there's a lot of people that will slow you down. You know, it's not a nice business, especially what do you, when you don't want to sign to them. What are you working on now? Like what projects music. are you working on now? Are you something that you love or okay. a lot of a lot yeah, of lots acting? Yeah, lots of movies, lots of like you know. Basically, when it, when I say no to horror films and um, a lot of horror films because I don't really like a lot of um, I don't like oxygenating death and um, I know horror films are cool and everything, but it's like you know when the children watch it, right? The teenagers watch all this torture and this pain and everything like I don't want to be someone that's in those that's that's a choice I've made so it's hard you know I'm not getting roles a lot so I, I basically right now just work to make money on just random little bits and bobs until like the, the dream role comes again right and if it does it does if it doesn't it doesn't have you thought of directing or I've directed and stuff have you directed yeah, yeah. but I'm not yeah I mean I have all kinds of little gems inside of me but I don't talk about them until they come to life Oh, right? You just don't want to... No, I'm not like, you're like oh, I, my, I don't wanna. my directorial debut? Yeah, you're not doing it? No? Not gonna no, I'm not like that. Because so many things fall through, you guys, in this business. Like, yeah. even like, you know, if you do good at an audition, like, hey, mom, I killed it today. You think you're going to get it? Probably not, but, you know? <laughs> like, that's the truth, you know? You, you always have to, you know, keep... You know, just just know that it's it's tough. Like it's you tough. Do, do you have a process of rejection with actors? I mean, you know how actors. I drink a lot. No, I was kidding. I, um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, how do yeah. actors do that? Do you think? I mean, you know a ton of actors. Yeah. The process is different, right? You just you just keep yeah. on keeping on, right? Yeah, you just yeah. you just do. You the have audition. to hope in your agents and your managers, which they're just humans too, right? And they're, they're, they're only as good as, like, whatever their wives or their husbands are treating them like, hey, buds, you all right? You know, you know he, he ain't pitching me this week. Yeah, because he's been fighting with his wife because he's been cheating every night or what. And I'm not trying, you know what I mean? But, like, oh, boy's like, you know what I mean? It's like, and then you got this whiny actress, like, hey, 
you know, there, I remember me, he's like, you know what, lady, get, so it's like, it's just, it, it, these are humans, like, these are humans working for us, right. and that's what stands in the way of an actor and their career, is, are these people that represent us, and sometimes we're smarter than them, and, um, but we can't call, like, hey, it's me, and I think that I'm great for this role, be like, it's Aaron? No. <laughs> is that you? No. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> Time means everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Time means everything. Right. It is. You're right. And there it, it is. is. And, and that's the thing. You can't force it. That you destiny can't. is a thing, isn't it? But you also have to have someone just pushing your name in their ears yeah. every day because yeah. there's so much coming at them. Like, think about just your phone and Instagram and all these, you know, just all this and what do you think about that? What do you think about social media connected to people's public persona and sure. their professional how do, persona? How do you feel? How do I feel? Yeah, let you take. <laughs> talk about Well, I. Because that's all. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind of shy. I'm going to mom People, over people here. don't really know that I'm kind of shy. I don't really. Yeah, right. I don't post a lot. You love it. Let's go. I don't. And I, don't, a one, I don't. I I can sit up here with people because I know it. you guys. Uh, but no, but you're on there. That's how we reconnected. What's yeah. your thoughts about it? And, you know, just Instagram and all that, or TikTok or whatever. I think that uh, the industry is really obsessed with uh, people having um, their personal persona on public. Like, if you don't get hired because people think you're tripping on Instagram or something, I, I don't know if I feel that's right because a role can switch people's lives around, you know, like, like a John Travolta before, you know, Pulp Fiction or, <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of roles that happen that turn people's lives around, you know, in two months you could, you could be up, you could be, you know, reading an Oscar award winning character, you know, and that, that's what the beautiful thing about it is that being in the industry is a journey and it's not for the faint of heart and you do it because you love it. You know, that's the only reason why someone would act or direct or write is because you have to. Right. Yeah. And I think that there was a time that thespians, you know, true, true actors were, they didn't have Instagrams. So like, what do I got to do? Yeah. You know, I got to post stuff. Cause yeah. there was a time you wouldn't see like Brad Pitt or anybody yes. on, on these types of, um, at, you know, areas because there was a mystique. Yeah, they want you to have a lot of followers. Now, you know, you get cast because the followers, and, that, and that's frustrating, you guys. Like, that is. So, is you can purchase them. <laughs> Does anyone have don't. any more questions? We're, we're going to, we have our award show coming up. I yeah. hope people are. There's a do winner. You think, do you think people right now are excited because they're up for an award and they want yeah, us to get off the stage? They should be. <laughs> that's great. Congrats. That's awesome. Yes. Hi. Hello. I want to thank you for being here. And also, I want to let you know that I went to Oak Crest after you, you did? which is nice. why I'm so obsessed with you, part of it. Aww. And you're also an amazing actress. But I want to ask you, can you tell us as comfortable as you feel expressing like what it was like working with Brittany Murphy? Oh. If, oh, if that's okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, so Brittany's awesome. She, she's born November 7th. I'm, or was it either one day before me or one day after? And uh, I'm November 6th, and she's, um, she was truly, 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 like a, like a, um, like a little fairy, like a, like Tinkerbell. And I remember when I showed up to a mouse that I'd never, you guys in my life, showed up and had a three-page yellow legal, you know, where it's the eight by 11, handwritten, never met her in my life, uh, a, a note, like a letter to me, I'm so happy you're here. And just on and on she went and gushed over me and I was like so young like what, what a weirdo you know what I mean <laughs> but but then I would I would know you know not not too far along that she's truly just you know she just she's just uh, she, she could sing she's such a great actress they treated her pretty bad on that set uh the the director because she was just kind of out there you know yeah. but but she was nervous too but she's awesome, and we miss her. Okay, we're going for one last question. Who has it? Angela, you have to choose. Go on. Someone that has Who it. it. Maybe back there. There you go. Who has the Hit microphone? It. How about you in the back? Did you ask something? I yeah. took a picture with you. A what? What did you say? A what? Mary Jane. What's that? 
Is she talking about marijuana? Oh. Yes. Oh, you want to smoke the... <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? Wait, there's a mic right there. There's a oh, mic that's, right, that right there. Yeah. I really appreciate all the films that you do because every character they watch you in is like different. It's like your character goes from one person, next one is different. It's like I love the fact that you act and I want you to keep going and do it. I would love to. That's a good thing about acting. You can do it till you're old, old, old. So music, it's like, yeah, I don't know if they're going to buy this anymore. But yeah, with acting, you can take that all the way to the grave. So that's good. You know, and that's why I say never give up. So if you're in here and you're an actor, like seriously, like, like do it. Go all the way because it's worth it. It's fun. It's escapism. It's like, you know, go into that role all the way. You can get out of your weird mundane lives or whatever and go into that character and just fucking do it. You know what I mean? Excuse my French, but yeah. That's right. Yeah. Excuse my French. Yes. <laughs> well, this is uh, Taryn Manning, everyone. Yeah. And just so you know, this woman here, wowzers, what a sweetheart. Thank you so much. Yeah, no You're worries. awesome, honey. And uh, we're going to have the award show now, and uh, Taryn's going to give out an award, and we're going to have fun, you guys. So everyone stick around. Just a couple more uh, minutes, Thank you so and we're going to set up. Thank you.